Hi guys, it's Ashraf from WizEdu, and today we're going to be going through compound angles and the compound angle formulae. So, to get started, what exactly do we use the compound angle formulae for? Well, basically, we use it to evaluate the value of trigonometric functions without the use of a calculator. So, when we do some examples a little later, you guys will understand exactly what that entails and what that means. So just like we had when we did double angle formulae, um, we had two types there. We also have two types of compound angle formulae. We have the cos compound angle formula and the sine compound angle formula. So today we'll start off by taking a look at the cos compound angle formula. So before we even get into the formula itself, let's try and just understand what exactly a compound angle is. A compound angle is basically um, an angle that's made up of two or more parts. So for example, if we said cos theta plus beta, that would be a compound angle because it's something plus something. It's made up of two parts. In this case, that would be theta and beta. So the compound angle formula allows us to evaluate these kinds of expressions. So our first cos compound angle formula is if we adding two angles. So in this case, x and y. And what the formula tells us is if we have cos of the sum of two things, in this case we said x and y, if we wanted to evaluate that, it would be cos x times cos y minus sin x times sin y. So you can see the way I like to try to remember this is cos, cos, sine, sine, and a change in sign because over here we had a plus and over here there's a minus so we've changed the sign so it's cos cos sine sine change in sign so for example we wanted to simplify cos a plus b we could use the formula and make that into cos a times cos b and we change the sign because we had a plus there we put a minus now sine a times sine b so this is how we use the formula to simplify um, a compound angle and we had a plus here so you can also have a minus but remember the trick to remember this is it's cos cos sine sign and a change in sign so cos cos sine sign change in sign and for example let's say we had cos theta minus 30 degrees how could we evaluate that using the compound angle formula well that would be cos theta times cos 30 degrees and now we change the sign it becomes a plus here that would become plus sine theta times sine 30 degrees but just take note that you don't have to memorize these formulae um, if you don't want to they are given in the formula sheets in the exam it's just, it's very good to memorize them as it saves you quite a bit of time. Um, so you don't have to flip back to formula sheets during the exam. So I'd highly encourage you guys to remember, remember it. And it's quite easy. If it's a cos compound angle formula, cos cos, sine sine, change in sine. So let's go ahead and just do some examples just to consolidate what we've learned. So for example, you were given cos theta minus 40 degrees and you asked to evaluate it so what would you do well from the cos compound angle formula we know that we're going to say cos cos sine 
sign and we're going to change the sign. So because we have a minus over here, we're going to put a plus over there. So if we had to evaluate this, it would become cos theta multiplied by cos 45 degrees. And we change the sign, so that would be plus sine theta times sine 45 degrees. And it's also equally important in an exam to recognize the reverse. So if you saw this line over here in an exam, it's equally important to know that you also could go back to cos theta minus 45 degrees. So for example, you were doing a trig identity and it was looking really complex, but if you saw a cos cos sine sine change in sign, you could go backwards to the more um, compact version of cos theta minus 45 degrees. Okay, so let's try this example cos theta plus theta, and this is quite an interesting example. Um, we'll apply the same formula here, cos, cos, sine, sine, and we change the sign here. We have a plus, so we'll make it minus here. So let's just go and put that in. Theta plus theta, although it doesn't, it looks a bit strange, it still is a compound angle. It's still the addition of two angles. So it's going to be cos theta times cos theta minus sine theta times sine theta. And that can be further simplified. That would become cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. And I'm sure you can now notice that this is the double angle formula for cos because cos theta plus theta is actually cos 2 theta. And we know from the previous videos that cos 2 theta can be simplified to cos squared theta minus sine squared theta. So this is just an interesting example I've just chosen to show you guys um, where the double angle formula comes from. So as I mentioned earlier, one of the uses of the cos compound angle formula or compound angle formula in general is to determine the value of trigonometric functions without the use of a calculator. So here we ask to determine the value of cos 30 degrees plus 45 degrees without the use of a calculator. That means you can't take out your calculator and find the answer to this. You can, but only to check if you've come to the right answer, because most of the marks will be in the working out. And in this example, I've written it in such a way that it's easy to understand from the outset. You probably won't get a question like this. You'll probably be asked to just evaluate cos 75 degrees. And you'd have to see from your special angles how you can make 75, and that would be through 30 plus 45. So we'll use the same cos compound angle formula we've been using, which is cos, cos, sine, sine, change in sign, right? So cos 30 degrees plus 45 degrees would be equal to cos 30 degrees times cos 45 degrees minus, we change the sign, sine 30 degrees times sine 45 degrees. And now from our special angles, we can just substitute into there to find the value of this. Cos 30 we know is root 3 over 2. Cos 45, that would be root 2 over 2. And sine 30 is half. And sine 45 is also root 2 over 2. Note here for the 45 degrees, you could have used 1 over root 2 or root 2 over 2. I'm just using this one here 
so I don't have to rationalize the denominator later on. Um, so that would become root 6 over 4 minus root 2 over 4. And because our denominators are the same, we can merely subtract the numerators. That would give us root 6 minus root 2 over 4. And you can check this in your calculator. You can either punch in cos 75 degrees or cos 30 plus 45 degrees. And this is the answer your calculator would give you. So you can see we can use the cos compound angle formulae to evaluate these complex trig expressions and get the value of them without your calculator. So this is more of a question you'd get in your exam because you aren't given the broken up version of the angle. You ask to determine the value of cos 105 degrees without the use of the calculator. So now how you'd approach this question is you think of your special angles. So our special angles are 30 degrees, 45 degrees and 60 degrees. So how can we recreate 105 from these three angles? Because we basically want to use these angles so we can avoid using a calculator because the question told us we couldn't. So we only know the value of these angles. So these are the only ones we allowed to use to determine the value of cos 105. So perhaps we could take the addition of 45 and 60 degrees because the sum of 60 and 45 is 105. So we could then say that cos 105 degrees is the same as cos 60 degrees plus 45 degrees. And from there, we can go ahead and apply our cos compound angle formula, which is cos cos sine sine change in sine. So let's go ahead and do that. It would be cos 60 degrees times cos 45 degrees change in sine, that would be now minus sine 60 degrees times sine 45 degrees. And these are our special angles, so we know these, so we don't have to rely on a calculator. Cos 60 is half, cos 45, root 2 over 2. And again, you can use 1 over root 2 if you want. I'm just using root 2 over 2, so I don't have to rationalize my denominator at the end. Sine 60, that's root 3 over 2. Sine 45, also root 2 over 2. You can go ahead and multiply. That becomes root 2 over 4. And this is root 6 over 4. So now we finally get an answer which is root 2 minus root 6 over 4. And you can see that the final answer is negative because root 6 is bigger than root 2. And we said our answer is root 2 minus root 6. So does that make sense? Well, yes, it does. Because cos 105 degrees lies in the second quadrant because that's where 105 is. And we know by the cost rule, cos is only positive in quadrants 1 and 4. So it must be negative over here in quadrant 2. So because our final answer is negative, that's also an indication we did something right. But you can also check this answer on your calculator. If you punch in cos 105, you'd get root 2 minus root 6 over 4. So we go on to the sine compound angle formula, and it's quite similar to the cos compound angle formula, but there are a few differences which we'll go through now. So if you are given the sine of the sum of two angles, in this case x and y, okay, the sine compound angle formula basically says you can evaluate that by saying it's equal to sine x times cos y plus cos x times sine y. So immediately you can see 
an obvious difference is that the sign stays the same. So we have a plus there and a plus here. So, and the pattern has changed as well. Before with the cos compound angle formula, it was cos, cos, sign, sign, change in sign. Here it's sign, cos, cos, sign, same sign, right? So our sign stays the same. So for example, we were given sine alpha plus beta. We could use the sine compound angle formula to evaluate that. That would then be sine alpha times cos beta. Sine stays the same plus cos alpha times sine beta. And it can be a bit confusing, but it's always a good technique to just check that you have a trigonometric function for each angle on either side of your plus or minus side sign. So on the left hand side, we can see alpha has a sine, and on the right, alpha has a cos. So we have a sine and a cos for alpha on either side. And on either side, we also have, we have here a cos for beta and a sine for beta. So each angle needs to have both trig functions on either side of the plus sign when we're dealing with the sine compound angle formula. So we can also have the difference between two angles. So for example, we were given sine theta minus 30 degrees. We could apply the same pattern and that's sine, cos, cos, sine, same sine, right? So that would then be sine theta times cos 30 degrees. And in this case, it's minus, minus stays the same, minus cos theta times sine 30 degrees. And on either side for theta, we have a sine and a cos, and for 30, we have cos and sine. So let's go on to a few examples to, to consolidate um, the sine compound angle formula. So for example, we were asked to evaluate sine 30 degrees minus theta. We'd apply the same rule or pattern, which is sine, cos, cos, sine, and the sign stays the same, right? So let's apply that pattern here. Sine 30 minus theta would then become sine 30 cos theta. Our sign remains the same. Cos 30 times sine theta. So that's our evaluation of sine 30 minus theta. So you can see where I'm going with this example. It's quite similar to the one we did on cos. And you know that sine theta plus theta is sine 2 theta, which is a double angle. So let's go ahead and apply the a formula, which is sine cos cos sine, same sine, and see where that takes us. So that would then be sine theta times cos theta plus, same sine, cos theta times sine theta. And both these two terms are the same. So if you had to look at sine theta times cos theta, that's the same as cos theta times sine theta because we multiplying. So you can just swap that around just to see it a bit better. Um, we don't have to, we could go straight to the solution, but just to show you that they are in fact the same, I'm going to write it out. Sine theta times cos theta. So you can see what I've done is I've basically just swapped the sine and the cos around here and I'm allowed to do that because it's the multiplication of two terms. It doesn't matter about order and that would become then... 2 sine theta 
cos theta, which is the evaluation for our double angle formula, which we learned in the previous video. So you can see where that formula comes from. So let's go on to some examples where we asked to evaluate the expression of an angle without the use of a calculator. So in this case, we're given sine 90 degrees. So we basically have to think about our special angles. That's going to be 30, 45, and 60. And how could we make 90 degrees? How could we make that from 30, 45, and 60? Well, I can see two ways of doing that. We could either do 30 plus 60, or we could use 45 plus 45. So we can use either of those to get to our answer. Obviously, the easiest one to use in this case would be 45 because they're both the same and it's going to make addition and multiplication a whole lot easier. But I'm just going to show you guys 30 plus 60 just so we can get some practice. And then I'll show you a different method for the 45 plus 45. So let's go on and rewrite sine 90 degrees as sine 30 degrees plus 60 degrees because 30 plus 60 is 90. Then we just apply the formula, which is sine cos cos sine same sine. That's going to be sine 30 degrees cos 60 degrees, retain the sine cos 30 times sine 60 and now we just make use of our special angles we know sine 30 is half cos 60 well that's also a half plus cos 30 root 3 over 2 times sine 60 is also root 3 over 2 so we can say that would be a quarter plus 3 over 4 and that gives us 1 and we know sine 90 is equal to 1. You can try that on your calculator. What I'm going to do now is just show you another way we could evaluate 45 plus 45 without the use of a calculator and also not using our compound angle formula. So I'm basically just going to digress off the topic of compound angle formula, but the question hasn't restricted us to use compound angle formula. It just tells us don't use a calculator but evaluate this expression. So we said that 90 is the same as 45 plus 45, right? 90 equals 45 plus 45. But we also know that 45 plus 45 is the same as 2 times 45 degrees. So I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this. I'm basically saying that sine 90 degrees is the same as sine 2 multiplied by 45 degrees, which is a double angle. It's 2 of something, right? So I could also use my sine double angle formula to evaluate this expression. So I could say that's going to be equal to 2 sine... 45 times cos 45, which is 2 times root 2 over 2 times root 2 over 2 brackets there, and that's going to be 2 times 2 over 4, which is 4 over 4, which is also 1. So you can see that there were actually three different ways you could have approached this problem. You could have said that sine 90 was equal to sine 60 plus 30, as we did the first time round. You could have also said it was sine 45 plus 45 and used the compound angle formula to evaluate that. Or you could have said that 45 plus 45 is the same as sine 45 times 2 and used your double angle formula to simplify that. So let's go on.
to one final example, we are asked to determine the value of sine 15 degrees without the use of a calculator. So let's write down our special angles, 30, 45, and 60. Now, how can we get 15 degrees from these three? Well, again, I can see two ways. We could either say 45 minus 30 gives 15, or we could say 60 minus 45 would give us 15. And you can choose either one because they're both going to give you the same answer. So just for interest's sake, let's take 60 minus 45. So we'll go ahead and say that sine 15 degrees equals sine 60 degrees minus 45 degrees. And we can apply our pattern, which is sine cos, cos sine, same sine. So that's going to be sine 60 degrees times cos 45 degrees. Our sine remains the same times or minus cos 60 degrees times sine 45 degrees. And we can replace those with our special angles. Sine 60 is root 3 over 2. That's going to be multiplied by root 2 over 2. Again, I can also use 1 over root 2, but just because I have this root 3 here and I don't want to rationalize the denominator later, I'm going to use root 2 over 2. That's going to be minus half times root 2 over 2. And that's going to give us root 6. Remember, if you're multiplying two thirds, um, you can basically multiply the insides of those. That's going to be minus root 2 over 4. And our denominators are the same. So our final answer is root 6 minus root 2 all over 4. And that's our final answer. And you get the same answer if you used 45 minus 30. And you're more than welcome to check the answer on your calculator, which I really suggest you do in an exam just to make sure you've arrived at the right answer. So that's it, guys. That's compound angle formula. I hope you've enjoyed this video and please feel free to subscribe and to give us a like and drop some comments in the comment section below. Thanks guys.